Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where we look at a member of my classic computer collection. And today's video is a remake of an earlier video. This one's in high definition, the other one was in low definition. And it concerns a machine that came out in the late 1970s and was a contemporary of the Apple II, TRS-80 Model 1, Commodore PET, the Atari 800, a Challenger series of computers, came out around the same time as them. It is the Exidy Sorcerer. So let's check it out. As mentioned in my introduction, the Exidy Sorcerer was a child of the late 1970s. It was released in 1978, which was a year after the famous mass market microcomputer trinity of the Apple II, the Commodore PET, and the Radio Shack TRS-80 Model 1 appeared, and around the same time as the Atari 800-400 series. For the day, this 2 MHz Z80 machine had competitive specifications. It had a full-stroke keyboard, lower case was standard, it came in a single case so everything was neat and tidy, had graphics capability with user-definable graphics, and had standard interfaces built in that in other machines tended to be optional extras. Exidy was a US company, but visibility wasn't high in that market. Where the machine really made its mark was in Australia, where it was actively promoted by local entrepreneur and Aussie icon Dick Smith through his chain of electronics stores. In fact, according to Wikipedia, in 1978 to 79, Dick Smith Electronics may have been the only place in Australia you could buy a microcomputer over the counter and that would have been the Exidy Sorcerer. Here you can see a Dick Smith advertisement for the Sorcerer from Australian Personal Electronics in 1981. That price is in Australian dollars. Not exactly sure of the conversion rate between Oz and the US at that time, but I'm picking it would be about $900 US or so. Also, I would consider that price to be a clearance price, as the Sorcerer was coming to an end of its marketing life. By 1981, Dick Smith had the less expensive System 80 as the new flagship, and the focus was going on that. Now here's an ad showing some peripherals for the Sorcerer. Note the S100 expansion unit there, which gave it the capability to run disk drives and CPM. And notice also these ROM packs, particularly the one down the bottom there on the bottom right, the EPROM pack. And this allowed people to burn their own EPROMs, put them in a blank pack, essentially, and then... Uh, they could have their programs um, immediately on boot up. So here's the machine itself. It's actually a lovely looking machine. It just reeks of high quality. You can see the traditional angular shape there that was customary of machines of the day. There's the Exidy logo. The plastic is uh, a high quality plastic. It's quite, it's quite hard. It doesn't feel brittle and cheap like uh, say the VIC-20 plastic for example. Really nice keyboard, it was, it's a full stroke keyboard, uh, very easy to type on. You can see there it's got a numeric keypad and some arrow keys are hidden on there. A couple of reset keys, you've got to push those together if you want to reset the machine. I guess that's to stop, you're pushing one accidentally when you're typing. And there you can see almost Petsky-like characters on top. The machine does have graphic symbols and you can define a lot of your own graphic symbols too. Here at the back are a couple of vents just to keep the whole thing cool. Really nice looking unit. I like it a lot. So we'll move around the back and you can see the, the expansion bus for an expansion box will, which would allow you to attach disk drives and run a type of CPM. Next to that is a parallel interface and a serial interface. Nestled between them is a video out socket. The parallel interface and the serial interface weren't standard with a lot of machines of the day, or at least they weren't fitted. They were there as an optional extra, but the Sorcerer has them uh, already fitted. So that's quite nice. On now to the insides and as is usual with computers of the day, there's a massive, huge transformer and large capacitors there for the power supply. Just down from those are the RAM chips. There's 32K of RAM in this machine. You can see it's fully populated. The rest of the board is pretty standard. Uh, 
logic chips outlaid in neat rows and columns. There's a daughter board sitting on top there. I'm not sure what that's for. And you can see the large ROM pack there as it's, uh, as it's attached to the board. So that's what it looks like inside. Oh, one other thing that's perhaps worth noting, or one other thing I found when I zoomed in here, is I couldn't get this keyboard connector off, and the reason why was that it had been glued there. And it is something you should be able to take off, but somebody's put a lot of um, black plastic glue around it, and it was totally unmovable. Okay, so let's boot the machine and see what happens. The Sorcerer is interesting in that, unlike many of its contemporaries, it doesn't have BASIC and ROM. BASIC's provided in a separate ROM pack. What you have got in ROM is a monitor program. So this is a ROM-based program that allows you to directly view and manipulate memory locations and ports. It also has functions which allow segments of memory to be loaded and saved on cassette. So let's load in a program. Note that once it finds the program, as it has now, it tells you the location the program's loading into and the entry address as the value at the end. So to run a program, you need to go to that address after it loads. So I've now loaded the program, type in uh, that address, and we'll be underway. So as you can see, it's not really an intuitive process. It's easy once you know how, but for someone who knew nothing about computers in those days, it would have seemed a very technical process. This program I've loaded in is one of Scott Adams' adventure games. It's his third adventure. I really enjoyed playing these games back in the day. And the Sorcerer is a computer that it would be good to play these games on because it does have 64 columns and uh, 30 rows of text. So you get quite a bit of screen real estate for your adventure type descriptions. But it does more than just display text and I'll just run through some of the programs that I found for this particular machine. One program every computer of the day had was a Space Invaders clone and here's one Martian Invaders comes on this cassette and I'll put it into my industrial strength tape recorder that I got with the unit and we'll load the game in. And this is what it looks like, so classic Space Invaders, um, aliens there that you've got to dispose of as they scroll across the screen, getting closer and closer to you uh, and getting faster and faster. This is Arrows and Alleyways, where you've got to maneuver your ship around these blocks and uh, fend off the approaching horde. Then there's this one. This is Astro Attacker, type of Space Invaders game, but or Galaxy Invasion game, but a bit more sophisticated. Now you'll all recognize Pac-Man, or at least a clone of Pac-Man. This one's called Chomp. So again, no computer of the day could do without one of these programs. And also this one here, which is Defender. It's very similar to the Atari game. Quite playable. Galaxy Invasion, again another game that became popular on the Atari, also available for the Sorcerer. Spent, I spent lots of time playing that game when I was younger. Then you've got the games that aren't quite so frantic, like chess, and games like backgammon. You can see the graphics there aren't half bad in the Sorcerer. People could use the Sorcerer for serious things though. This is a database, easy file. This is Midas, which is another database program. And this one's Spellbinder, which is a word processing program. You could actually get this one on a ROM pack as well. And speaking of ROM packs, let's have a look at the basic ROM pack. And there it is, you can see it's got a list of reserved words on there. And right down the bottom there, it says Copyright Microsoft. So it is a Microsoft Basic. It's 8K in size. 
I don't think those reserved words, that list of reserved words was very useful because when you plug the pack in, as you can see, and you couldn't actually read them. So this is what the machine looks like when it boots up into BASIC. And there we have the standard ready, which means we're all ready to type in a program. Now I was quite lucky with the Sorcerer in that I got a lot of manuals with it in the purchase. And they make interesting reading. So here's the, here's the main manual that introduces you to the Sorcerer. And it is themed in the guise of a journey. So you've got this character who's dressed like a wizard. He is the Sorcerer. And he's essentially taking you through a journey, uh, a journey through the computer and through computing. So you can see there the chapters are appropriately titled with a travel theme. It's a good manual, it's got quite a bit of technical information in it in the back, but it's written in a very friendly style to uh, allow people to progress through it fairly easily and in an entertaining way. The accompanying manual is one on BASIC. Again, it uses the same theme as a tour or a journey. And you'll see from some of the chapter headings, um, here we're starting off, for example, it says passports and visas. So it goes through the basic language, uh, the various commands and statements and uh, some example exercises in there for people to type in. It's a good tutorial book. Just flick through it, you can see some of the chapter headings, native phrases, trading foreign expressions, schedules and timetables. Quite clever really and a desire to make it a little less intimidating and a bit more friendly to new users. And now we come to the heavy stuff, the technical manual. And this manual is everything that you could wish for for a technical manual. It's well written, it's neatly set out, it looks professional. Uh, it's divided into two, section, the two sections. The first section deals with the firmware and the second section deals with the hardware. So it describes how the computer works, what you need to know if you're going to do any, uh, if you're going to repair the machine or do any dabbling with the hardware. At the back you've got the, you've got a number of circuit diagrams I'll fold one of them out. So it's a pretty useful book and it's one that I had to use because when I got the machine, the basic ROM pack wasn't working. And I had to repair that. I had to burn an EPROM, put it in there. And I found this technical manual quite useful as a reference source for how those ROM packs worked. Now one thing about Dick Smith is that he supported the computers that he was selling very well. In particular, the Exidy Sorcerer and the System 80, which came next. So he commissioned his own manuals, and this one introduces people to the concept of computers and then the Sorcerer itself, but it spends a lot of time on the built-in software, in other words, the monitor program, including a full listing of the monitor program. So there it is, all typed out, all disassembled and if you wanted to, if your monitor program had failed inside the computer, you could always pipe all of that hex code out and put the program in an EPROM and plug it back into the computer. It's always interesting to see these small programs disassembled like this and just realize that uh, there's quite a lot to them. So the last book is this introduction to the Sorcerer of Basic, written by John and Judy Dean, and Dick Smith used this couple to write a similar booklet for the System 80. And it takes users through how to use Basic. It, it's essentially a tutorial, but done in a very friendly and non-threatening way, a little like David Lean's books for the TRS-80 Model 1. For level two basic.
So it uses uh, lots of whimsy, um, diagrams, just gradually takes people through the concept of programming. Which of course to new users back in the day, for most of them, programming was a completely new concept and could be a little intimidating. Now, one final thing to show you. One thing I was very pleased with is that I got the Sorcerer in its original box. So you can see it there. And the box is actually modelled after a suitcase. Uh, it actually fits in with the travel theme of the manuals. So there you can see it, the unit itself, some cords at the back there, and the ROM pack in that rectangular slot. So what are my final thoughts about the Exidy Sorcerer? It's a great machine. If I'd stacked it up against the others that were around in 1978, I would have looked upon it very favourably. It's got a great keyboard, it's well engineered, it's got a lot of things that were optional extras for other machines, like lower case, parallel serial ports. Why didn't it do better? Well, it could have been the marketing, Price seemed to be reasonable at about uh, 900 to 1,000 US. That was comparable with a lot of other machines at the time. It may be that perhaps it fell a little bit between two markets. It was not really feasible for business. It didn't come with a disk drive. It wasn't disk capable. And even if you were trying to run CPM, you could only run a particular version of CPM because of the memory constraints in the Sorcerer. So it wasn't really suitable as a business machine and in some ways it was a little pricey for a hobby machine and with the release of the Ataris there was an emerging home market which liked the use of colour and sound. The Sorcerer didn't have these so that may have gone against it as well. But it's a machine that is certainly one of the treasures in my collection and I'm glad I've got it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the Exidy Sorcerer. So until next time, keep well and we'll see you in the next video.